Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about AWS organizations. We will see that how AWS organizations can help us in the scenarios where we have got a big organization or a big enterprise where you know we go ahead and run multiple AWS accounts. So how can this particular service help us? So first of all, let us understand what it is. As you can see, this is the definition which I have just picked up from AWS documentation. Very simply it says it is an account management service that enables you to consolidate multiple AWS accounts into an organization that you create and centrally manage. So first step as you can understand is that we can go ahead and create an organization which will be a central thing and within this multiple accounts will be consolidated. Now you might be thinking that there was something called consolidated billing earlier, right? So yes, uh, earlier consolidated billing was there and what consolidated billing uh, used to do was that it allowed you to basically consolidate the bill which has which has come in all of your different accounts into one central or master account and then you can just pay from that master account. So think of an example that uh, in your enterprise organization, right, you have got let's say 20 different accounts for different departments. Now you would not want that every uh, every department goes and pays a bill uh, you know to to AWS every month so instead of that what you would do is you would actually enable consolidated billing and you would consolidate the bill from all the 20 accounts to one master account right so you will just pay the sum of everything from your master account of course the benefit was not just about just about paying one bill rather you were getting more benefits like uh, like you are getting discounts on the whole volume, right? So if you uh, if you look at the pricing of AWS, the way it works is that if your organization or if your company is using is, is using a lot, right, of any particular service, you get volume discount. For example, if uh, if you look at if you look at S3, if lot of data out or you know things like that, uh, whatever costs in S3, if those things are happening a lot, typically on the data transfer. If that is happening a lot, you will get uh, you will get lower charges. Not only data transfer, data transfer, data storage, both of the things. So you you will get you will get a you know a lower a lower pricing range. So uh, so the way it works is uh, if you if you are paying your bill separately for separately for each and every account, you might not get that discount, right? But if you combine the expense for all the 20 accounts, your overall expense or your overall spend basically right uh, that increases right or your overall overall usage on the s3 would increase and you will qualify for that particular discount so that's the that's the benefit of of basically consolidating it that's a, that's a another benefit now that was there for you know for for very long time aws organization came in and now aws organizations surely does consolidated billing and it does something more as well so what is that AWS organizations includes consolidated billing, right, and account management capabilities that enable you to better meet the budgetary, security, and compliance needs of your business. So not only just bringing all the bills at one place, it also gives you account management capabilities. How does it do that? It does that via uh, via giving you a construct or a facility called SCP, which we'll just talk about in a while. So it, it allows you to basically uh, basically enforce certain restrictions or policies uh, right from one central place across multiple accounts. Now, you guys know that how IAM works. So any policy which you write in, in, in IAM that applies to that account only. But think of a think of a of an example that in your enterprise organization, you want to apply some policy which should which should work on all the 20 or 40 or 80 accounts which you have got in your company, then AWS organizations give you uh, gives you that particular mechanism as well. So we'll see how can we do that. So as an administrator of an organization, you can create accounts in your organization and invite existing accounts to join the organization as well. So uh, you guys would have seen uh, the other video on our channel where I explained you that how can you go ahead and set up a completely new AWS account. Now, in an enterprise organization, you would not want to go through 
the complete process of giving your credit card again and again validating it and things like that right you would not want to do it for every account so uh, in case if you are using aws organizations uh, you have got that benefit you can just go ahead and create a new account from the organizations itself and the number of steps which would be involved in that case would be lesser i will show you that as well in our demo within this video and in addition to that if you want you can also invite any existing accounts right if there is an account which was already created as an independent one and if you want to you know make it part of your make it part of your new organization you can go ahead and do that by inviting that account so we'll we'll see that as well in our demo right so be with us and look at uh, look at all the demo and understand uh, you know aws organizations properly let's go ahead what do enterprise customers need to scale their aws accounts effectively first of all they would want to centrally manage all the policies surely there would they would want to put certain restrictions uh, you know across all the accounts which i was talking so that is one thing also they should have a mechanism that they should be able to create new accounts very easily and uh, they might also want that certain accounts right should have one type of policy applied some other account should have another type of policy applied so you can go ahead and create some grouping in 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 organizations you can create certain groupings and you can apply different type of policy we'll talk about that as well in a while view charges and usage across accounts this is common thing i think we talked already so these are the requirements which would be there uh, you know for any enterprise organization now out of this this third the, the third point was already there in consolidated billing but the first and second is something which aws organizations is bringing newly now onto the plate so what challenges have customers faced as they increase their number of aws accounts first of all if they had to you know apply some restriction it meant that they had to go and repeat the policy again and again in every account because you know the im policy would apply to one particular account so if they want to let's say put certain restriction they'll have to go and you know copy and paste the same policy everywhere that that was unnecessary repetition now with the organization you can do from a central place so we'll talk about it more creating a new account involves many manual processes as i told you already if you have to create a new account totally in an independent manner you have to validate your payment method and things like that you do not want to do that and of course billing consolidation you do not want to go and do independently on every account so these were the problems so in order to solve all of this of course organizations came into picture and as we talked using this you can do a lot of stuff quickly you can go ahead and uh, apply certain restrictions policies from a central place you can even automate account creation what does what do we mean by automate account creation so aws organizations actually gives you certain api calls itself using which you can go ahead and and actually create a new aws account now if you are creating a new aws account independently right the method is you need to go to aws website as i have shown you in the other video you will do everything on the website give everything in the um, you know in the website fill all the values and go through multiple steps and create your account now at a large scale if you want to create if you want to automate the whole process that you know maybe just uh, you know your web application you write a custom web application and that web application accepts certain values and then it just calls an api and creates a new aws account so using organizations you can do that as well that's a that's a great thing for 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 some organizations who have who have gone to a very high level of automation this could be a really really helpful thing trust me next is consolidated billing and usage reporting i think we understand that already right great okay let's talk about some of the important concepts related to organizations so first of all what happens is that you uh, you know from any one account you'll go ahead and create an organization right so understand that the account from which um, you know from which you will create this organization that would be the master account right that would be the master account and then you can go ahead and you know actually join multiple other aws accounts into this organization so, so those accounts which will join to this organization would be called member accounts now next thing is organizational unit so if you remember i was telling you some time back that you may choose to create certain groups right 
so those groups of accounts would be called organizational units in short it is also called ou and the policies which you will apply from organization are called scp service control policies there is another diagram which will help you understand better so as you can see at the top you have your master account within the organization what we can do is we can go ahead and create organizational units now as you can see we can have an organizational unit and in that organizational unit we can have an aws account or we can have other organizational unit also inside an organizational unit so you can do a hierarchy but important thing to understand is one ou cannot be part of two ous so what i'm trying to say is this ou cannot be part of this and this both no it has to be part of one organizational unit only and in the same way an aws account as well should be part of only one organizational unit that is something which is important so if you see this aws account is part of only this ou this aws account is part of only this ou and so on so this is very important to understand that uh, an aws account can belong to only one ou in the same way an ou can can belong or come under only one ou or directly under the root right so i hope that part is clear now thing is how much such levels can we make so if you try to see here it is 1 2 3 4 so totally four levels are there right in this hierarchy so how many such levels can we can we make so the levels number of levels which aws organizations um, uh, allows currently is 5 so that 5 would include the root and the last aws account as well right so the number of level maximum can be 5 now the beauty is you can go ahead and apply scp which is called here as policy service control policy you can go ahead and apply scp at any level here that's the beauty you you might have a simple use case and you want to just apply some policy to all the accounts you can go ahead and apply at the root level so it will flow down to every account right you may have there might be a scenario where you think that okay uh, to this organizational unit and to this account alone i want to apply this policy you can do that to this organization unit you want to do this one and at this level you want to do this right so you i mean at every level you can go ahead and say that this particular scp i want to i want to apply now how how would all this scp come together and work i will show you again i will show you that part in in a in a separate demo because i want to uh, show you right from writing of the scp and then show you that you know between multiple accounts how does it work how can you do white listing black listing and control the action so i will show you that for now in this video we will limit it to the to to this understanding of the concept okay now let us see and understand that you know as you move forward uh, in your aws journey you would be using aws organizations and of course i am both so let's understand how does it work you know both of them together so as you can see this thing is organization this one is i am so in case of uh, organizations uh, using this you can go ahead and create new aws accounts you can create organizational units which are nothing but logical grouping of aws accounts and then you can go ahead and attach scps to organizational units right so you can do that now uh, whereas the scope of iam would be to create users roles and policies within one aws account right that's iam you can go ahead and uh, manage the assignment of users to roles within that account which user can assume what particular iam role you can do that sometimes you can also do cross account as we have seen in other videos there is a detailed video on iam if in case you want to go ahead and look at it please look at that particular video on our channel and understand i am completely it is very important that you have understanding of i am already before you start understanding organizations right so and all in this and also you can manage cross account access with the help of uh, you know i am roles right so you can allow that a user from another account can actually assume a role from let's say another account so you can do like let's say you have two accounts account 1 and account 2 in the account 1 you can create a role call let's say role 1 and in the role 1's trust uh, policy you will specify that a user from account 2 can assume it so user from account 2 assumes it and then this guy would be able to do things in the 
account work. So that's how both of these things will will work together. Uh, the 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 important thing or the you know a cool thing would be to would be to understand that how can we go ahead and let's say uh, write certain policies at at IM level and then we can have another uh, you know some other policy at the SCP level and then we'll see how does it come together and work so I want to show you this thing uh, you know by writing the policies uh, uh, right from scratch so that would be the next video which is coming right after this so please subscribe so that you are informed about it all right so now we will go ahead and uh, look at the demo as part of this particular uh, video so we will see from scratch that how can you go ahead and create a new uh, a new AWS organization. Uh, so there will be one master account from where we will go ahead and create the organization. And then we will do two things, right? First is that we will add a new, uh, uh, a new AWS account to this organization, but that account is already created, right? I created that account independently. So if you see the video which was which came just before this, in that I went and created that account in an independent manner. So we'll attach that particular account or add that particular account to this organization. Third thing what we'll do is, from this newly created organization, we'll go ahead and create a new AWS account altogether, right? So we'll do both the things and then we'll see. An important thing to, to note here is, uh, earlier it was not possible that if you are creating a new account from the organization, you it was not possible to actually detach it from the organization, right? So the, let's say I'm creating a new account now from the organization. So I would not, like it was not possible to detach or remove that account from the organization. This was the case earlier. Sometime back, this has changed and now it is possible for us to even detach it. Right? But, but when you detach, it will ask you a few additional um, information which you'll have to provide. right? Because please understand, when you are creating a new account as part of organization, the benefit which you are getting is you you you, you basically skip through all those uh, all those details, all those repeated details. You don't have to put that. right? That's the beauty. So in case you are taking your account away from the organization, then AWS will ask you to fill those details. Great. Now let us go ahead and first try to create our organization. So as you can see, I'm there in, in my account of first account of Knowledge India. And just for you to, to try and track this, as you can see, I'm currently operating in Google Chrome. And here I will go here and will say my organization. So we'll go ahead and first try to create a new organization. So we'll say create organization. So it says Yes, yes, yes. Provide single pair, all the benefits. Yes, we have understood that. We'll say create organization. All right. So as you can see, we have our organization created. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add an account, right? So if I, first thing is I want to add an account uh, for which I, you know, which I have already created. So I'll press this and I'll say, invite account because it is already there so i'll say invite account now it says verification email sent a verification email has been sent to your email address okay so first thing is it is saying that uh, check your email to finish verifying your master account so first step is i will have to go and actually verify from my email address so that i can declare that this particular account is the master account so i'll just go ahead and do that as you can see, I have got this email, so I'll go ahead and uh, try to press and verify this. All right, so now the email address has been verified and uh, this has been put as the master account. I'll go ahead and try to add a new account to this organization. So I'll go ahead and say invite. So now I am going to put the email or account ID of an already existing account, which I created uh, in the last video, as you can see. So after trying to invite the existing account, this is the error which I'm getting. So uh, I tried to look at it. Uh, this seems to be a very common problem. So we'll have to wait for some time uh, after creating the organization and then we will be able to add the account. Uh, I tried to look at look at the 
uh, AWS forum. And as you can see, there is a lot of, you know, you see starting from one to 13 and even more, there are a lot of people complaining the same thing. And these uh, issues are written from March 12, 2017. This is the first time I'm uh, seeing something on AWS end where, uh, you know, where uh, things have not been fixed yet, right? So, uh, I mean, this particular issue has run in months in 2017 and we are in 2018 end and still this problem is happening. I'm really wondering how to move forward, but I'll try to solve this. As you can see, I read through this thread and people have written that they have waited for 48 hours, they have waited for 72 hours, 16 hours and things like that. And still they are getting the same problem. So, uh, people from support uh, who are replying on this particular thread, what they've done is they have gone and uh, manually uh, enabled it uh, from the from the backend. That's how they have done, which uh, I do not like that much. Uh, it should be working smooth by now because when this particular service is more than a year old now, AWS organizations and still we are getting this type of thing. All right, guys. So after waiting for roughly half an hour, uh, I was able to send this invite. As you can see, if you go and click on the invitations here on the right hand side, you'll be able to see that an invitation has gone to an account. So what I need to do now is I'll have go, I'll have to go to this particular account and I'll have to accept it. So let's do that. So as you can see now, I'm there in another browser, Firefox, and in this I have uh, logged in with the, with the other account. This is the account which I created in the last video, right? I created this account independently. So I need to go here to my organization and understand, in, uh, you know, from this particular account, I'm going to join that organization. So I've already received the invitation here. So we'll go to invitations. And here you can see that from this organization ID, I have uh, basically received. So I'll just go ahead and say accept. Once I say this and I go ahead and say confirm, this particular account would join the organization which I created. So here this is done. As you can see, now this account belongs to this organization. Great. I'll minimize this. And here, let me go ahead and try to refresh this and see if the status changes. You can see the status says is accepted. Great. So going back to accounts, as you can see now, I've got two accounts uh, in my organization. We will try to add another one. So this is the one which is create, which is added now, uh, but this account was already existing. I will go ahead and try to create an account. We'll just go ahead and say create. As you can see, while I'm trying to create this new account, it says you have exceeded the allowed number of AWS accounts. All right, so I got the limit increased uh, for my organizations. Um, as you guys know that uh, for every AWS service, there are limits in place. So the default limit for organizations as a service is quite less, it is two, right? At least in my account, it was two. So I had to raise a support ticket and got it increased. It took some time uh, before they resolved the ticket. And after it got resolved, I think now we should be able to go ahead and create another account, you know, um, via this organization. So that's what we are going to do now. So let us go ahead and press on add account. And uh, we have already seen that how can we invite an account which is already created and added to the organization. Now we are going to do create account. So we are going to create a totally new account. Remember, when you want to create a new account, you would need an, uh, you know, an email address. An email address is going to be unique. So that you would really, you would surely require. So I'm going to specify a new email address here. And uh, you can uh, leave this part blank. An IAM role gets created using which the master account, right? The one in which I'm logged in. This would be able to do things um, if required into the uh, into the 
child account or the account which is going to get created okay as you can see the same thing is mentioned here as well so i press down create and as you can see a new account is getting created so we'll have to give it some time all right so after waiting for some time uh, i have received email on the on the new email address which i specified while creating this new account so i received email welcome email there so as you can see here but uh, basically the content sent in these emails are are generic it's all about welcoming and the free tier benefits and things like that uh, it doesn't send you any password so i guess for the first time we'll have to go and set up our password through forgot password mechanism and we will do that uh, right so let us try to let us try to go ahead and do forgot password and see i have switched to a different browser let us try to log in here as i do not have the password for this i'll try to do forgot password and see what does it say okay d4 dd8 x submit all right it says it has sent an email let's see so i just received this email let us see what does it say it says that need to click on the link below to reset your password using our secure server so i'll just copy this full thing and go and open it in the same browser so it should ask me to set up the password all right let me go ahead and set it up always include symbols all right great so i have just um, created this password successfully now let us try to log in All right, so with this, I am getting inside this newly created account. As you as you just noticed, this account got created from the organization's level, right? So I did not have to do the whole, you know, I did not have to verify my mobile number. I did not have to uh, verify the credit card or debit card or things like that. Whatever was specified in the master account the same thing got used for this newly created account and uh, yes it took time earlier because of the issue of organization limit uh, but then uh, if you have increased that limit already creating a new account is that easy right you can just go ahead and in a few clicks you are able to create this new account and please understand as we did it from the console in the same way AWS organizations uh, exposes um, API commands or CLI commands as well which you can go ahead and use uh, to actually create a new account yeah and that's that's really good okay so uh, uh, this is great now we are inside this newly created account I've named it ki3 and guess what now that this account is created now from this point in time for 12 months I do get all the you know all the free tier benefits I am sure you guys know about free tier benefits already. I have talked about it in another video on the channel already. In case you want to go ahead and look at it, please do so. Uh, so uh, let me minimize this. Go back here. So as you can see, uh, this is my master account or the first account which was there. And then there are two more accounts. KI2 is the one which I had created independently and then I joined here. KI3 is the one which I created now. Now let me go ahead and show you organizational units. So currently, as you can see, if you go to organize accounts, you can see all the three accounts here. And you will be able to see that currently all these uh, three accounts are there at the root level. Root is basically, you know, just the starting point. You can think that way, right? It's the starting point. So it's uh, all three accounts are currently hooked or currently attached or are currently placed at the 
root level at the starting point. So let us go ahead and create an organizational unit first. So organizational unit is nothing but a collection or you know um, a collection of of certain accounts. And the reason why you are doing that collection is because you want to apply same type of policies to all those accounts. So let's say I'm going to call this as dev test. So I'll create an organizational unit called dev test. So it should appear up here. As you can see, dev test has come. Now, uh, what I would like to do is I'll try, I'll, I'll go ahead and move KI3 and KI2 both in these, uh, you know, in this uh, dev test organizational unit. So I can go ahead and select this and this and say move and I can move it to dev test organizational unit. As you can see, dev test organizational unit is inside root. Also, something important to understand, choose the organizational unit you want to move the accounts to. An account can be only in one OU in a root. I, I, I talked about this in the start as well. An account can belong to only one organizational unit. It cannot, be, it cannot belong to two organizational units. It is possible that one, one organizational ca unit can belong to another organizational unit as well. All right, so first let me go ahead and say move. When I do that, now you can see at root level, we have got this our master account and we have got one organizational unit. If we go to this organizational unit, we'll see that we have got two accounts. If we want, we can do something more. We can say, you know, something like, let's say sandbox. Now I'm creating uh, another organizational unit inside dev test and I may choose to move this one here. So it's possible. Now you can see what have I done at root level. I've got one account and then there is one organizational unit and then in dev test there is one account and there is another OU organizational unit and then in sandbox I've got another one account right so you, we can we can go ahead and create hierarchy like this uh, we had talked that how many such levels are possible so including the root and the bottom most account five such levels are are you know you you can create five such uh, levels in the hierarchy uh, i request you to please go through and read uh, uh, read the FAQ section um, uh, about AWS organizations. I'm leaving the uh, link in the description of this video. Please go through that and read it. So um, I'll also show you uh, later on in the next video that how, how can we go ahead and apply service control policies on different organizational units and how would they work, right? So that I'm, uh, I'm gonna bring it in the next video. Let me minimize this now. So we just now finished this demo. Now let's now let's move to next thing. Let's quickly talk about some of the best practices. Monitor activity in the master account using AWS CloudTrail. Uh, understand that in any AWS account, whatever activities are happening, always it will get recorded via CloudTrail, right? So it is important that the master account which we which you are using. And that also you have CloudTrail enabled so that each and every activity which is happening, which may even include, uh, which may even include creation of new accounts, everything should get uh, monitored and logged using CloudTrail. Also, it is a good practice that you move all the CloudTrail logs, all the CloudTrail logs from different uh, AWS accounts within your organization to one account. That was that is a very very uh, very very good thing, uh, because in case something goes wrong into the into the child accounts, your CloudTrail logs would always be safe, right? What I'm trying to say here is, if you uh, uh, you know, let's say in this setup, what you should ideally do is in the KI3 and then in the KI2, when you enable CloudTrail in these two accounts, you should not write those CloudTrail logs into into the s3 bucket which is there in the same account rather you should create an s3 bucket in in this master account right and write all the logs from ki2 and ki3 accounts into this particular s3 bucket that way 
that way your logs would always remain intact and nothing nothing would go wrong right that would be a good thing because you would not give access to access to anybody uh, you know to this particular account to come and operate and 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 hence uh, there are no chances that they will be able to come and change anything there, right that's a good thing i'll also show you how to set up cloud trail in detail and things related to that in another video which is which is about to come up okay uh, next thing is do not manage resources in the master account do not get into resource creation in your master account please understand use your master account only for certain uh, operations or certain types of usage what are those use it for collecting all the logs use your master account for uh, you know uh, to act as the master account in your AWS organization using which you can go ahead and create uh, create more AWS accounts, uh, you know, apply the service control policies and things like that. Do not get into creating EC2 instances or other resources in your master account. Do not use it for that purpose. Uh, use your master account for all the consolidated billing so that you are able to see all the bills at one place uh, uh, and then you are able to pay from there, right? That would be the right, uh, right way to use master account. Manage your organization using the principle of least privilege. I think all of us understand this at every level. Give only that much rights as it is as it is required for the person to operate. Do not be lazy and give more privileges or more permissions. Use organizational units to assign controls. We talked about it. I'll show you more about it in the in a demo later on. Test controls on a single AWS account first. In terms of permissions, first see that how is it working in one account and then go ahead and try to extend it to multiple accounts. Uh, when, when IAM policies and service control policies both will both come together uh, because of organization and, and, in, and an individual account, uh, things might become a bit tricky at times. So, uh, uh, that is the intention, you know, to show you with an example that how 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 would how would these two things work, uh, you know, in a in a separate tutorial. I'll show you that uh, quickly. Uh, onto the last, uh, AWS organizations uh, doesn't doesn't uh, cost you anything. It it does not, um, you know, it does not incur any cost. So that's great. It's a global service. Does not is it's not a uh, confined to a particular region. As you might have guessed, uh, same like I am, as I am is global, organizations is also global. If you are accessing via CLI or via API, the endpoint would be there in North Virginia, which is the case for most of the services which are global in nature. In that case, their endpoint would be there in North Virginia most of the times. Um, in, uh, in terms of free tier benefits, please understand that the day when an account gets created, uh, from that day, it's... Uh, 12 months of free tier benefit uh, period starts, right? And you can go ahead and use the same credit and or debit card to create multiple AWS accounts. That's possible. And you will get free tier benefits on all those accounts, right? But please understand the email address which you are using with every account needs to be unique. All right, so I hope uh, you understood what AWS organization says. Um, I, I would suggest that you also go ahead and try this uh, by setting it up, right? That way you will be confident. Uh, please make sure that before you go ahead and do it, um, get your limit increased for AWS organizations to some greater number of accounts uh, or else you will be stuck in middle. And sometimes, it uh, you know, the email uh, trigger or the email alert takes few minutes before it comes to your mailbox so be patient there you might have to wait okay um, with that I'll end this video uh, please look at other videos on our channel youtube.com slash knowledge India there are a lot of AWS videos which would help you to learn and move forward uh, share it with your friends tell them about this channel uh, if you if you have understood things right uh, so a lot more videos coming uh, guys Please extend your support by sharing and liking this video. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye.